Welcome to iLecture Online, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about nuclear physics, and in particular, we're going to talk about the binding energy of a nucleus. So what does that mean? Well, one of the great mysteries in the universe, and of course in physics, was how it was that a nucleus stays together. And the reason is, for example, if you have a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons, the question is, with six positive charged particles like those six protons, how does a nucleus stay together? Because the repulsive forces of those protons are absolutely enormous. So something is holding that nucleus together, and we found that to be the nuclear strong force. But where does the energy come from to hold it together? Because you can't just say, here it is, stay together. Something has to overcome that repulsive force. And so what we found was that when we take the individual constituents of a nucleus and add up the masses, and of course there have the masses of those individual constituents, the proton, the neutron, and of course the electrons around the nucleus, if you add those together, you find out that they, that they have more mass separate than when you combine them together. So somehow mass is lost when you put a nucleus together. Let's find out how much mass is lost in this case. Well, first of all, we know that the mass of a carbon atom, including the six electrons, we can't forget about those, uh, are ex is exactly 12 atomic mass units. So no, let's now calculate the mass of six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons separately and see what they are. So six times the mass of a proton is equal to six times this quantity right there. And in case you're wondering that I have another uh, mass for the proton over here, but that's really when you add the mass of a proton and the mass of an electron together, you get this mass. And sometimes it just combines the two, but we're going to do it separately. All right, so six times the mass of the proton is six times that. And what do we get? 1.007276 times six equals, and that gives us 6.04367. Five, six atomic mass units. Okay, now six times the mass of a neutron. Whoop, neutron, like that. It's an N, not a P. That's six times that number, 1.008665 times six equals, and that is 6.051990 atomic mass units. And finally, the mass of six electrons. So 0 0.000549 times six equals and we have six electrons is equal to 0 0.003294 atomic mass units. I'm going to add them all together. Okay, so that's 0, 1, 10, 15, 4, 2, 8, 17, 9, 1. That's 4, 5, that's 8, that's 9, that's 0, and that's 12. So if you add up the mass of six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, you get 12.098940 atomic mass units. Put them all together, you only have 12 atomic mass units. So the difference in the mass, which is called the delta M, so delta M, when we subtract 12.000000U, you get exactly 0 0.098940 atomic mass units. That's called the difference in the mass or the mass defect. So sometimes we also term this to be the mass defect. The, am the amount of mass that's lost when you put a nucleus together. So what is the equivalent energy of that? So the binding energy is taking this mass and converting it to energy using the equation E equals mc squared, which means we have to take this mass and plug it in here in Einstein's equation. But before we do that, of course, we have to convert that to kilograms. So how do you convert atomic mass units to kilograms? Well, first you convert to grams, and one gram is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atomic mass units, and then converting that to kilograms, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And so what is that number in kilograms? So 0 0.098, 94, divided by 6.022 e to the 23rd, divided by 1,000, equals, and so the missing mass, or the mass defect is 1.643 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. So now you plug that in here, and we calculate the energy that's released when you put those protons, neutrons together. So we have the energy is equal to 
1.643 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. Multiply times the speed of light squared. And what do we get? Okay, so uh, times 3e to the 8, we square that, equals, so we get 1.4787 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. All right. Now, sometimes it helps to convert that to um, uh, electron volts. So if we want to convert that to electron volts, we have one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So divide this by 1.6 e to the 19 minus joules. And we get, if I convert that to these units here, we get 92.4, 92 0.4 MeVs, that's million electron volts. So the energy released by putting a nucleus of carbon together is 92.4 million electron volts. Sometimes they want to express that in terms of the binding energy per nucleon. Since there's 12 nucleons in here, we can say that the binder, binding energy per nucleon, total nuclear particles in the nucleus, is equal to 92.4 MeVs divided by 12. So we divide that by 12 equals, and that gives us 7.70 MeVs per nucleon. And that would be the binding energy per nucleon, and that would be the total binding energy of a carbon nucleus. And that's how you find the binding energy.